grandfather would sit me on his lap and tell me, look, I know your grandmother and your mother took you to church all the time. I want you to make your decisions for yourself, and I want you to know they're a bunch of thieves. I'm serious. When you go in the church, all you see is gold. Now, where did that gold come from? Now, just look at him. From the poor people, the gullible people. And then he would say, and don't you ever read the Bible. It makes you crazy. And all this stuff, and he would put me on his lap. And don't you go to the United States. They will mistreat you because you're Mexican-American. And, and then he would say, they will call you Spaniard, Spanish, because they don't want to admit you're Mexican-American, but that's what you are. So you don't want to be mistreated. I don't know what your father's doing over there. And you know, he would tell me like that. And don't you ever become a citizen. If your father should take you over there, don't you ever be, and, and he would just indoctrinate me, indoctrinate me. That was my grandfather, okay? What broke him was when my, my uncle, Antonio, that's the one that's older than my dad, like two or three years, was very ill. I, he, I think it was either, he's in Laredo, Texas, but I know for a fact they were living in Corpus Christi because I looked them up on the census. Mm -hmm. They were living in Corpus Christi that, during that time. Anyway, he says he was real sick and he went to the hospital and he says, my, my baby is real sick. He's sitting there with my wife. And they said, bring him, we'll take care of him, the doctor. When my mother, my grandmother took the baby in and they found out that they were his Mexican Americans, we, we don't serve your people here. I went to Lubbock School and the majority were Hispanics. Mm -hmm. But like I said, I was not treated bad because I was a little light, yeah. you know. But people like my brother, my brother Joe, they're darker. They were put like in the second and third group. It's not a, I don't know if it's a coincidence, but everybody on the first group, they were my color yeah. or lighter. There was one boy that sat in front of me, his name was, I'll never forget him. His <laughs> name was Aguilar. And the reason I won't forget him is because he was like my, he was a little darker than my brother and he was in the front row, in front, not in front row, but it's sitting in front of me. There were two rows of people that, that were supposed to be smarter and I was in that row. And if you look down that row, everybody's light or my color. Mm -hmm. And then, like I said, there was that little boy, his name was Aguilar, I don't remember his first name, but his name was Aguilar. And he was very dark, and I would say, mm, he must really be smart. I would say that because I figured, you know, I was, I was a very, I don't know if you say smart, or a child that I knew what was going on, like Bella. Yeah. I knew what was going on, you know? And then when I was looking at my brother, Joe, he's, he's bright, he's smart, he, I mean, and I would see him, and they would always throw him in the second group or third group. And I would always say, and I would say, Joe, let's read. And we would read, he could read. And I was like, why? And then I, you know, I knew why. I got married when I was 31 to Stan. Between that, I had a lot of boyfriends. And you know how they would tell me, Irma, I'm sorry, I can't, I'm sorry, I like you a lot. You're a real nice woman. You have very good values, but I can't handle you. You're too much out there. I said, what are you talking about? You don't know you're a woman. I said, what do you mean? And one of them told me that. His name was Roy. He did tell me that. He goes, you don't know your place. And I was like, I said, Lord, I don't know what they're talking about. I tried the ones in the church. They were like that, like that too. I tried the ones that were not in the church. They were like that. I said, I don't know, Lord, why you made me like this. You better send me the right one. He sent me Stan. The second day, he took me to meet his mother. I met his mother and I said, Lord, this man can handle me. Look at that woman. She was five foot four at the most. She weighed about 110, 120, but that little woman was a spitfire. And I saw her and I said, he can handle me. And then I met his sister, so I said, forget it. This man, he won't be scared of me, he can handle me.